Okay, so um, today we're going to talk about models of poverty and, and management of poverty. Uh, we'll get started on that and continue it throughout this week. Um, we talked last time about influence diagram models, and then we did a tutorial on uh, MATLAB Simulink um, to um, simulate essentially signals and systems, okay, signals and dynamical systems. We'll be continuing that today, um, that Simulink uh, treatment via a simple example, okay? Now, in the book and in my slides, when you see this is called uh, teletype um, font, um, or some people call it courier, um, when you see that means that's a program, or that's a command line in a program. So this is a name of a program. All the code that I use in the whole class is at the website, under where the book website. It's called HE Code, okay? So you can download, you'll need to download this uh, program. What I'm gonna do is um, run it right now and explain it. So for this, uh, um, I had pulled up, it's called Wealth Calculator. Now, what Wealth Calculator does, the broad big picture is, is it, it's a financial analysis of, of someone's life, okay? And um, in particular, if you go up here to the, um, uh, you, see, you see the model configuration parameters. It goes zero, stop time, 100, step size, one. One here means year. Okay, so this is going to represent someone who lives 100 years and they're going to do an analysis per year. Okay, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have various things. There's going to be money coming in, there's going to be expenses going out. This person's going to decide to invest, in, put their money in a savings account. They're going to put, decide to put their money in the stock market. And then you're going to look at their growth of wealth over time until they die at 100 years old. Okay? So that's, that's basically what we're up to. Now, you might say, wait a minute, I would do that in Excel. Sure, you can do that in Excel. We're just doing it here so you can learn Simulink. Okay? Um, now, to start out, uh, I'm going to uh, go up to the income area. Well, you notice, boy, that mouse is irritating. You notice this guy right here is income. That's the total income. Now, what I'm going to be thinking about here is income over your lifetime. So, well, income in the beginning is the first one, and it's going to come from the caregiver. So, if I, if I open up this block, um, there's the money uh, that maybe a typical person would get um, before they're 21. So there's a low level amount of money that's being paid for housing for the child, food for the child, gifts for the child, blah, blah, blah. I assume it's relatively constant from zero till about 18 and then suddenly your costs skyrocket. Why? College. Okay, and you pay for college, and it goes way up there for a while. Then it, then you're booted out of the nest. You're off the dole. You have to go make money yourself. So parents' income goes to almost zero. The remaining time there is Christmas gifts and whatever. Okay. Now you might say, well, my parents will do a lot more than that for me. Well, fine. What you're going to do, actually, as a homework assignment, you're going to go in here and modify this into your life, okay? What you think your life will be, most optimistic version of what you think your financial life will be, and then the most pessimistic version you think your life will be, and you're going to study and compare the two, okay? And thereby create simulant diagrams. Now, I'm going to put a zero gain on that output because... That's not money I'm going to save. I'm not accumulating wealth from it or, or anything of the sort. It's, it, my, it's my parents' investment in my future. <coughs> so at 21, I'm cut loose and I have to go start making money. Now when I do that, I've got this little diagram. And this is, uh, this is tuned a little bit. Uh, 
notice that at 21, I'm lucky enough to get a job. My pay for my job is up there around what? $65,000. Sound familiar? That's about what a BS in engineering will be paid when they graduate. Okay? And then that sloping line going up is getting a raise. Okay? Now, see, you can go up here. You see this thing? I can grab that little circle. Higher starting salary, lower raises over time. Right? Lower raises over time. Okay? I mean, and then I retire, my income goes down, I want a fixed income, a pension, whatever it is, Social Security, I live the rest of my life out, I die at 100. Okay? So, so this guy um, is my personal income in dollars per year. Now, <coughs> next, I swear. Uh, it, it's, it, might, it may not be able to tell what's going on. It's having difficulty managing whether to use my mouse input, my, my laptop um, trackpad input, and it's not always taking some of the input. So there, I double click on the mouse, nothing happens. I double click on the trackpad, and it works. Go figure. Uh, here is uh, provisioning. Provisioning means other people giving me money. So I'm going to assume that I get some uh, very little provisioning in my whole life up until I'm 70 when I retire. Um, and then I get, um, I'm gonna call it provisioning uh, from uh, things like Medicare, um, Social Security. You could argue, well, I'm spending on that and I'm just getting the money back. Fine, however you wanna represent it um, is, is fine with me. And then uh, that finishes then <coughs> your major incomes. Now we have to put together um, The expenses. So I, uh, my personal expenses, uh, I don't have to pay anything for myself. My parents are taking care of me until I'm 21. Then I'm on my own. My expenses go to some value. I got to buy an apartment, food, blah, blah, blah. And my expenses go up over time until when I retire and all I do is sit around so I don't have as many expenses. Okay, unless you travel a lot, whatever. You might have something, something different than that. Okay, and then... Uh, the next one is um, living expenses. Um, my, my living expenses will go up, um, uh, assuming, uh, I'm sorry, living expenses for child. So I assume I, I, assume I got married at um, whatever, had children, uh, a child, living expenses for that child start at some value go for 21 years and, and increase over time and then they're out of the house and my expenses come back down, okay? You say, wait a minute, that's not my life. I'm not trying to live your life. You pick this. You might say, I wanna have two kids. I wanna have zero kids, fine, okay? Or you may come up to the top on income and say, wait a minute, I'm getting married and my husband or my wife is gonna be making this much money, add it to the diagram. Doesn't matter. Whatever you think you're going to do. Take a guess at number of kids, the expenses associated with them. Take a look at, you know, your incomes. Um, there's other expenses, uh, health expenses over time, okay, that go up, certainly go up. Um, and then uh, education expenses that you have to pay for your child. This assumes you have one child. This is the... Um, that paying for their their university um, and the inflation at OSU, you see right there is a nice steep plot from freshman year to senior year. Okay, so you you um, you have you have that. Now there's a summing block here on total income, a summing block on total expenses, and then I take all of my income, I minus off my expenses, and that's what I get out. Now let's look at. I'm going to compute different options. The first option, wait a minute. Uh, whoops, I swear.
So this, let's go to the bottom block first. What it says is A equal 1, B equal 1, C equal 1. What is that? Well, what it is, is the following. You see that in the block it says X N plus 1. N is the year is equal to A is 1. So it's just XN plus B is 1. So it's plus UN. UN is this signal that's coming in. All right? So all it says is, is that the output at the next step, x of n plus 1, is equal to what was there before plus what is put there you in. Oh, it's just a sum. It's putting money in the bank. Yeah, xn is the money that was in the bank. Here's the money you're putting in the bank. And this is at the next step, how much money in the, have in the bank. And it just sums it up. That's all. And there's no interest, OK? Now, so it's not a bank. I mean, it's, it's just, this is like putting it under the, the mattress, OK? So you're getting no interest here. All right, so that's just a, this is just a sum. Now, if you want to have 1% interest, if you think about what that means, uh, there's different ways of computing interest, OK? But here's one way. Now, the diagram has A and B is 1.01. .01. If you think about it for a minute, that means that whatever you have, like you're putting in now, plus the money that's there, by the end of the year, it's 1% more, or 1.01 times that sum. And that's what you'll have at the end of the year. That's all it means. Okay? So a bank, you know, gives you 1% or 2% interest, um, and you say, okay. The top one is the stock market, assuming 6% return on your investments. Right, you have 1.06, so that means whatever you have in the bank plus what you put in the bank times 1.06, that gives yourself a 6% interest is what you have at the next year, and you go forward. Now, those, those percentages have a big influence because they have a, you know, a compounded interest um, type formula because if you, get six, if you take your money and you, get, you turn it into um, 1.06 times as much, well, then the next time around, it's multiplied by 1.06 again, and it keeps growing. So it has a big, big influence. Okay? Um, questions. Now, I put a display down here in the bottom, which is the final amount of money that you have at the end of the 100 years. That's what these three boxes are right here. Scope is just going to give us a plot of wealth versus year for the 100 years, all right? So, any questions before we start running it and playing with it? Do you see how to change it? I mean, it's, it's really pretty easy. I, actually, students last year really liked this. There was people, they, were, they did all kinds of things. You know, I didn't put a loan in here, okay? I'll let, I'm gonna let you figure out a loan. If you wanna take out a loan, you gotta put it in there, go right ahead. Okay, I don't, I don't do that here. Um, And uh, like I said, the number of kids, I want you to do the best and worst cases, which means, you know, I'm going to make, let's say, 65K starting salary after I finish my BS, and then I'm going to get a, a, I don't know, a 10% raise every year. I don't know, whatever it is, and see what that does to you versus um, having a health problem and major health expenses and losing salary, okay? Lose your job, have your salary decrease, and, and see what the impacts are. See what the impact is of of not investing in the stock market. Some of these things are really big. You don't think some of the things are big effects, they're big effects. And that's sort of the point of, the simul of simulating this. You can't just do this in your head. It's not gonna work. Humans are very bad at thinking of compound interest. Okay, so um, let's run it. Okay, and uh, let's look at three cases. This is the, the case where I put the money under the pillow um, and uh, you'll notice that for that um, case, it dipped down negative some a little, a few times there. Those were times when um, I had expenses, remember, like paying for my kids and paying for my kids' college. It went negative. But, um, but there's a fascinating thing that happens later in life, important thing. It winds up. Why? 
Why does it wind up? I mean, look at that. Look how wealthy this person is by the end. They've got 1.4 million bucks when they die at 100. Why is it? It's just the accumulation. The expenses get low and then yeah, exactly. My expenses went down when I got old. Now, what's interesting though is to start look, see what one percent does. One percent interest on your money. So you look at it, you say, "Oh, that's about the same." Well, it's not actually. It's one point seven two eight million. Then you say, "Wait a minute. Let's look at that stock market. Look at this thing. It looks like. It, I mean, it's looking really good." Right? Because look what's happening. I've got over six six million dollars saved now. The magic of compound interest. Okay. Of course, uh, considering the people worked, considering um, who don't even have access to a bank, and the benefit of that that big jump there, you know, um, things are very different. Okay. Okay, so it's uh, uh, not hard to modify um, uh, the code, uh, changing um, the various effects of interest rates or expenses or uh, um, income and studying its effects. I mean, adding a kid is just adding a block, right? A block for... Um, income, uh, not income. You don't make money from your kids. You, you, they're an expense, right? Mm -hmm. So, so an ex, another expense block for a kid, um, and for a spouse, um, you know, assume whatever you want to assume, whether they're going to be making money or not. Um, so, up, up to you how you want to set it up. But this is really good practice to um, come to understand uh, Simulink. Um, signals and systems okay and you start from mine but you see you can tweak mine to fit your case and then you can tweak you can add blocks real easy okay any questions okay um let me next uh Go to this. Now, this is going to look like a mess. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it apart, okay? Um, and what I like to do in, to pick it apart is to start with the core here. The core is, is right in the middle of the diagram. And uh, you see a loop there. And the loop this is... is this is a key variable for us, wealth. It's going to feed back through. We're going to have expenses, income, income, and this is the person's bank. So in other words, this is store money in the pocket, okay? Take money out of the pocket, all right? Now, what I need to do is explain that core loop. Once you get that loop down, the rest of it's easy, okay? Uh, so first thing is, remember, this is just sum. This guy is the signal how much money you're putting in your pocket. This is what I'm putting in my pocket. It's my net income for the day. This just sums it up and holds it. Okay? Now it has um, as an output how much is in your pocket. Okay? Um, and then this is just a scope to show how much wealth you have. Now I'm going to be simulating. Uh, 21,600 days, that's uh, the number of days in a life of a person with, uh, that's 60 years old, which is a typical age for a person in the developing world, the maximum age, it's about an average. Now, back here, income versus day, all right? Ignore the raise for a moment, and the income per day is gonna be the following. Do you remember Zach and Chris and Guatemala and they said, they used this thing where they would draw a number, right? And how much money they would be able to spend that day. I'm gonna do an analogous thing. My draws though are from a distribution that's between zero and two dollars. So I'm gonna flip a coin, I'm gonna get 
50 cents. Flip a coin, I'm going to get $1.75. Okay? It's going to be somewhere in between 0 and $2. On average, $1 a day. Okay? So that's what's coming in. So when you see this right here, this line, what you see in your mind is a sequence of numbers, random numbers, between 0 and 2. Okay. So that's my income. I'm making money every day, being a day laborer or whatever. And then my net income is, well, I gotta take into account what I spent that day too, because I've gotta eat. All right, so I'm taking some money out and putting some money in. So the question is, is how much to take out? That's the crucial question. If you just always put money in your pocket, obviously you'll become a millionaire by the end of your life, typically. Okay, but this person's got to eat, so they got to take money out at the same time, and they got to decide what money to take out of their pocket. That's the crucial decision that they have to make. So, let's look at one way to make a decision. This, is, this represents the person, this box right here. It's extremely simplistic, just to get started. What the person does is the following. They're going to look at how much money's in their pocket. What they're going to say is, um, well, if I have zero money in my pocket, I obviously can't spend anything. I'm going to spend zero. So what will come out here will be zero, zero plus whatever I made this day is then stored in the back. Okay? Now this, this sloping line means that I'm going to make the slope, I'm going to assume for a minute that the slope is one. Therefore, Along that line, it means that if I have, um, let's say, 50 cents in my pocket, well, I'm going to spend all that 50 cents, okay, because I, I'm starving. That's just not enough to feed me for a day. So what comes out, the number that comes out here is 50 cents, 50 cents plus the random amount I made that day, I store in my pocket. Okay, so all the way up to $1, I'm going to assume I'm going to spend, okay? But... If I made that day, if I had in my bank $2, and I'm looking at it, this person's going to say, nope, I'm not spending more than a dollar. They're going to pull out up to a dollar. And that's what this little saturation right there means. So they'll spend no more than a dollar. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to adjust that number right there. Okay. And I'll let them spend a little over a dollar and a little under a dollar, and we'll look at the effects in a minute. Okay? That is it. That's, the, that's what the simulation is based on. Everything else shown there is simply gathering data. Okay? It's, it's nothing more than that core piece. So, um, and you see, I, I've added in all these, these scopes. There's a scope there for expenses versus day. There's a scope there on net income versus day, wealth versus day. I, can, I just put all that stuff so we can look at the signals as things go up and down. Okay? Now, um, any questions before I go on? I'm going to talk about gathering data. So just remember, I can say it very easily. What this, this is a poor person who has got money coming in, a random amounts they're putting in their pocket, but they're also pulling money out. And if they look in their pocket and they've got anywhere between zero and one dollar, they'll spend all that money. Once it's over one, once they have um, over one dollar in their pocket, they're only gonna spend one dollar. That's the policy they're making, okay? Now we're gonna talk about the wisdom of that policy in just a minute, but look, intuitively you can see why that's wise. If you spend on uh, every day on average less than what you're bringing in on average, you're going to accumulate wealth. If, however, on average, you, you, if so, whenever you have an extra nickel in your pocket, you spend it, you're not going to accumulate wealth. It's going to decline. Okay? That's the fundamental thing. This one point is crucial. It's not because one's a magic number. It's because the average income of this person is one, okay? And if they spend over the average, they're gonna have a big problem. If they spend under the average, they're gonna accumulate wealth, okay? Okay, so now, I wanna have me metrics or measures 
of how good the poor person's doing. So what it did is just invented some, some metrics. Um, let's just look at this one right here. This, this thing is just summing up the wealth. This is just adding up how much money the person had over their entire life. Um, put in some scaling, and then um, what I'm really doing is I'm computing the average wealth over a lifetime. Okay, I mean, yeah, that's a reasonable measure. This one down here says, how many, how many times was the person's wealth over $100? How many days was the person's wealth over $100? It, we, we want that to be many, many days, but you can see intuitively if they're only making a dollar a day on average, there may not be very many days where they have over $100 in their pocket. Okay, next. Over here, we have average expenses over lifetime. That is, how much are they spending on average throughout their whole life? Uh, if they're bringing in an average of $1 a day, Obviously, it's not possible for that number ever to go over one. We might try it, but it's not going to work. Uh, next, the number of times that the expenses are below 50 cents a day. In other words, that's the number of times they spent less than 50 cents a day on themselves. That represents a big problem for them because they were really hungry. Okay, they didn't satisfy themselves, so they're suffering. And we want to know how many times they did that. And we're going to admit, we're going to, when we run this simulation, it's going to generate all this data, and it's going to tell us how much they suffered, how much they saved, okay, for the particular strategy that they're using, okay. So we can get get a glimpse into the life of a poor person like this. Now, I got to tell you, you know, when you're trying to model someone's financial life. That's of course very complex, but this approach to modeling has some significant advantages. One of them being that there's not much that can go wrong. Uh, right? I mean, um, you know, you, you change this random in, income in, input, but that's pretty reasonable to measure savings. There's no interest, right? And then this is just a simple decision making strategy that actually seems pretty reasonable. Okay? So, what we're going to do um, is start out. Now, I got I to tell you uh, where I. Um, labeled uh you see this this upper it says upper i'm going to rename that capital e for expenses limit or spending limit and i'm going to grab a hold of that e and i'm going to change it to different values the first value i'm going to choose all right now remember what it means it means i'll never spend more than that amount did you have a question sort of um, on the days where they make no money uh, maybe i'm just not looking at this diagram right don't you think that they take some of the accumulated wealth to feed themselves? So shouldn't there be a, another loop in there somewhere? Well, it's summing it. So on, on days where they make no money, they may have saved some from the past, and, th and this 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 will be non-zero, and they will indeed spend that past money. So the wealth, the overall accumulated wealth, does go through that loop, like all of it. Oh yeah. So. <coughs> It's dynamical. I mean, you're onto the right thing. I mean, that, that money is going to be like stored up. It's going to go up and down depending on your luck and how much money you made on income and then based on how much you spent. Okay, so that number is E. Now, here's the thing. E is 0.95. That means every day if I have over anything over... 0.95, which is 95 cents, I spend 95 cents. That's it. On average, of course, I'm making a dollar a day. So on average, what am I doing? I'm saving a nickel a day. Look at wealth. It takes right off, right? You save on average a nickel a day by time at the end of a 60-year life of 21,600 days. Look, you're over, you, the person's got over $1,000 in their pocket. Uh, the whole life savings, okay? Um, and uh, here's what they're spending. They're, they're, they're trying to spend 95 cents a day because they're starving, right? So the person's suffering. This is the first message. They're suffering, okay, but they're saving. We're going to see that actually turn out to be a principle. Next, now this person's just a little bit greedy. Whenever 
they have um, uh, over um, a, a dollar and a nickel, they spend it. Okay? In other words, they spend an extra nickel. And you know that on average, they're not bringing that much money in. On average, they're bringing in a dollar a day, so on the average, they're losing a nickel a day. Okay? But you can't lose what you don't have. Okay? So it can't, on the, on the the positive side, it can take off to infinity. On this side, it's got to go down. So look what happens. It, it, it wealth, the person starts accumulating wealth there. Get up around $10 and boom, it crashes again and again and again and again. Okay? It, it, they end up losing it. And then and why is the expenses going down like that? That's what they're spending? Because they don't have the money. They blew the money on a previous day. They don't have the money, so they spend a lot and they suffer a lot. Right? So look at the life of the poor. Basically, it says, I'm going to save, save, save so hard and have a little extra money. I'm going to suffer to get that. Or I'm going to spend what I have, and then I'm going to suffer anyway. Right? Because that represents a lot of suffering because they're spending quite frequently less than a dollar a day. Okay? It's, it's the type of suffering that, that is going, they're going to incur. Okay? Any questions? I know the noise, you got to get onto the noisy plots, but this person, that's sort of one of the messages here. You know, it, it, it's very hard to conceive of what it's like to be living under an income stream that has this level of randomness. I mean, we're used to being held at constant salary for a full year, and then we get a raise. <laughs> you know, how many people have you heard of they, they get a, you know, a decline or whatever you call it? I mean, we don't have a good word for it. I mean, we're used to thinking of getting raises continually, and it's nice and constant paycheck every every month or two weeks or whatever. It's gonna. And that's not what the way these people are living. Okay, I mean, being a day laborer, some days they're gonna get paid, you know, some money, and other days you're not gonna be able to find work. Okay, and it really impacts their life in a significant way. Yes. Shouldn't the expenses be greater than one? In in that case, if they're proliferating, if they're spending more than what they're earning. It, do, you, do you see that the one there is uh, just, it is over one? It, I, the, the rule, it, it's, it's 1.05. Okay. Yeah. Whenever I go up to 1.05, and I, if I've got more than 1.05, I got 1.05 or more, I spend 1.05. So on some days, they're eating high on the hog, right? They got an extra nickel. On other, on a lot of other days, though, they got a heck of a heck of a problem. By being myopic and not thinking ahead, they're creating a real problem for themselves. Okay. Okay. Um, next. Now this is the confusing case. Okay. If it's right at one. Okay. In other words, the person. Up to one dollar, whenever they have one up to one dollar in their pocket, they spend it. Then some unusual things happen, actually. Um, and it's, it's not actually um, obvious why. Um, and if you want to, you can do, there's some great mathematics you can do to explain this, but I'm not about to do that in class. But what happens, and you can go rerun this, this will consistently happen if you, as you rerun this. It actually is a case that wealth will oscillate. So think of it conceptually. The best way to explain it is, if I spend a little bit too much, it kind of goes down. I spend a little, not, not too much, it kind of goes up. So in the middle, it goes up and down. That's what happens, actually. That's the simplest way to explain it. So it's kind of weird, because the person here in the beginning is, is accumulated over $20. And all of a sudden, for some reason, it crashes, OK? and goes down and then it comes back and it goes up it goes down and it goes up and down and up and down and so you, can you imagine just try to get yourself into the data here the way you're thinking if this you're saying to yourself i'm pissed because i know i'm making an average of a dollar a day i'm spending an average of a dollar a day and yet this is what my life looks like you know it's sort of like um you know you know some of the old sayings like oh we're having a run of bad luck, but there'll be better times ahead. That's basically what this is saying. Or things are looking good, I'm worried things are gonna get bad. That's what that's saying, okay? You're at a point here 
where the theory actually tells you that there will be this oscillation. Okay? It's, it's, it's given because of the feedback loop. And that feedback loop has some tough stuff in it. It's got stochastic, you know, uncertainty, and it's got a nonlinearity. So it's very difficult to analyze, but the theory says this will happen, and indeed it does. Okay? Um, so you look at this and you say, well, is this a better or worse situation than the previous situations? Well, um, well, it depends on your perspective. So let's go back. This situation um, where I'm careful, I spend 95 cents a day and just every day of my life I suffer just a little bit, but every day of my life. And I got money in my pocket though. If I have, my kid has a health problem, I can go to the dock and buy the, the get rid of the Giardia or the E. coli or whatever, right? But um, I'm paying for it, okay? The next guy says, Ooh, what a mess. You know, I'm spending, once I get it, I can hardly save a thing. My life is a random mess. Next one says, everything's going up and down. Once in a while I get enough money, once in a while I don't. I don't know if this is good or bad. Okay, so there's sort of a desire here to do better. I mean, this is an awful lot of random behavior. And, <coughs> you know, what you're going to find later in class, we study Banerjee and Duflo, and talk about the, the so-called barefoot hedge fund managers. I talk about how poor, the poor have to manage risk in their lives and uncertainty, and they're masters at doing so. That's the kind of thing we want to try to help with, okay? Managing that kind of uncertainty. Okay, next plot. Um, now, I put on your thinking caps. This is called a Monte Carlo simulation. It's actually conceptually really easy. If I just start out and explain one case, it'll help. So I want to start on the upper left plot. Okay, and what it says is the mean of the mean and the mean of the standard deviation of the wealth. Let's ignore the standard deviation for a minute and just say the mean of the mean. All right, now what in the world is the mean of the mean? We'll come to that in a second. So on the far left plot, you see the bar going up and down. You get the first point. So that's, that's a wealth. That point is wealth. But what it did is, is you take a per, a, one poor person, you run their life, and you find the mean wealth. Okay, the mean wealth over one life. One life. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 100 poor people, I'm going to run their lives, and I'm going to take the mean of the means. See what I'm saying? So I got the mean of the means. Then what I do is I computed the standard deviation of the wealth over all their lives, and I just took the mean of the standard deviations of my 100 people. And that is what the bar, that's what that bar is in that point right there. Under the assumption that E, the upper expense limit, is 0.75. So I take E equal 0.75, and then I, I, I run, I, I act as though 100 people have adopted that policy, I run these simulations, okay? Compute the mean of the means, compute the mean of the standard deviations, plot one point, plot one bar. The bar is simply the standard deviation. Okay? Does everybody see what I've done? Well, that's one point on the plot. Now what I do is I take the E and I move it up a little bit. Okay? Well, I move it up a little bit, meaning I've changed the policy now. Now I take 100 people and I rerun for this new policy. Find the mean of the means, mean of the standard deviations, and I plot it, and it went down. What in the world is that? So it says that the person, just think of it this way, their average wealth of the persons will be lower if they spend more. Of course, because that's all it's saying. E, by moving E up, it means they spend more, right? So you see I adjust E up, 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 and how much they save goes down, 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 until I get to around equal one, and then they don't save anything. They're just always spending it. Okay? Okay, that's the first plot. Why is there a chain of slope just right near the one? Because they should have probably run a thousand simulations. See the problem? I mean, this, this is a hard concept people to get. When you compute a mean, it does, uh, these means that you compute, for, if, I, if I run the policy for my life, 
and I, I was getting some incomes, random sequence of incomes. You run the policy for your life, you're getting a different sequence of incomes. That means your mean wealth will be different than my mean wealth over a lifetime. So if I make draws, I do it for everybody in the class, well, then I, it's a random variable. The mean is a random variable. And therefore, I have to take the mean of the mean. Now, if I do it for 1,000 people, it'll tend to converge better and all those lines will, okay. I just get lazy and run it for 100 or, okay. Now, next plot. I want to see if somebody could give me, tell me what the last plot is. Let's do the next plot. The one on the right. This is the mean and standard deviation of the wealth high count. This is the number of times that the person has um, over $100 in their pocket in their lifetime. And then I compute the mean and standard deviation of that. So on when E is low, that means they're spending low. Well, there's lots of times they have over $100 in their pocket. But once they get near one, they're spending more than the average income, it crashes. And they never have more than $100 in their pocket. OK? Next, the mean of the mean, the mean is the standard deviation expenses. So this one is similar. So as I move E up, I spend more and more, right? Well, so that's obvious why this line here goes up. I mean, but why does it stop at one? Well, because you can't spend more than you have, right? That's all it is. And why does the standard deviation, um, now that, that gets a little tricky. You would not have probably predicted that if you just, you know, ran these simulations in your head. Notice that the standard deviation then increases <coughs> as E goes up. Basically what's happened is just it's, it, when it's way up there, you're, you're, if you get lucky and you um, um, get a lot to spend because you accumulate a lot because you had a run of luck on your work, then you just blow the money and you're back down to the low situation. That's why, the big, that's why there's a big variance. Um, next, the bottom right. Can someone tell me what is going on there? That's the number of, that's the count of the number of times in their life they spent less than 50 cents a day on feeding themselves, okay? And E is on the horizontal axis. E is moving across there. I spend more and more and more and more, okay? And yet, paradoxically, in a sense, even though it's saying spend more and more and more, I'm not able to spend, what it's saying on the plot is what? I'm not able to spend more and more above one because that's my $1 a day, okay? Makes sense, right? This is called Monte Carlo simulation. It's easy to do and um, the code's at the website. I will not be assigning a homework problem on this, but I want you to be able to read these things because they're easy to read and they give you a lot of insight into what's going on. It, you're gonna find when you run simulations like, like the dynamical poverty model, you, you'll run it once and it's all noisy and you run it again, it's all noisy and it's hard to interpret. So what we do is we run it thousands of times and take averages and then you can see exactly what's going on, okay? Okay, um, next. Um, we're gonna change the game here because the problem is this poor person's having a difficult time managing their life if we model them um, the way we did. So we're going to change to this situation. On the far right, we're going to have, all right, I guess the best way to do this is um, we're going to explain uh, that I'm thinking of the person in the, the, the right in the box as the person with their savings. Their income's coming in, it's a random income, they have a certain amount of wealth. And then we're going to be giving them spending advice, okay? The wealth comes around, and we have something we're going to call desired wealth. Desired wealth would be something like, let's say, $30 a day. You'd like to have in your pocket $30 every day in case you get sick or your kids get sick, and you can um, take care of that expense so you don't have a catastrophe in your life. The error is, well, the desired wealth minus the actual wealth and then we're gonna run it into something called a spending advisor, which is a feedback controller. And it's gonna spit out some advice. It's gonna say, go ahead and spend this, okay? Now we're gonna begin by assuming that the person will take that advice, 
That's one perspective. Or we're just going to assume this person is the spending advisor for themselves. They manage their own finances. They're going to decide what to spend. We'll come back to that issue in a little bit. Now, that block diagram is going to—it's going to iterate. It's got feedback. So, everyone, take all the words off the diagram in your mind and replace them with the following. This is an automobile. This is the something under your hood called a controller. This is velocity at which you're traveling. This is your accelerator, your, you know, pressed down on the gas. This is the desired velocity. Now, what happens? Actual velocity, subtracted from desired velocity, creates an error. This guy looks at the error, and if you're at 35 miles an hour and you want to be at 55 miles an hour, push it down the gas a little bit, right? And as he gets close, it, it goes around a loop. He gets closer and closer to 35, keeps going up to 55, it lower, pulls the accelerator back. That's feedback control, okay? So this is a similar concept, okay? It's, it's a feedback loop in the same sense. And you could use, if you don't like cars, you want to think about temperature control in a room or autopilot on an aircraft, it doesn't matter. It's, it's all the same conceptually, okay? So we're gonna be talking about it as being um, a, a financial um, advisor. So it's important for you to have in mind, I think the way to think about this is if you're, if you're good at it, so you think around the loop, you think about what will happen iteratively as signals move around that loop. In our case, you know, we're going to have wealth, and wealth's going to be considered compared to desired wealth. And, you know, let's say it's less than the desired wealth. The air goes in here. Well, the air, this guy's going to have to make some advice such that it doesn't spend so much so that wealth will go up, right? But if wealth is above the desired wealth, this guy's gonna be able to say, spend some money, man. You're, you're, you got more than you need, okay? <coughs> and that system will automatically do that. What, is, what we will show is, is it does it in an incredibly great way, okay? Because this area in engineering is very well developed uh, and, and, uh, and applies, fortunately, to this situation. Okay? Um, questions? So let's, let's try to say what the objectives will be here. There's going to be a lot of them. The first stuff. Was, was sort of sort of showed us how bad it can get. We want things like spending to be as high as possible. We want wealth to be as high as possible. We want the number of times the person has is spending less than 50 cents a day to be as low as possible. We want the number of times that they have over $100 in their pocket a day, for instance, to be very high. We want all that stuff going on, and we're going to let the system balance it. Now, if you go, um, I want to do one more thing before we get on the, with that. Uh, <coughs> so here's this guy. I want to show you. I want to run this some to show you how it, it behaves because it's it's uh it's rather interesting. So if you just run this guy, um, so um. Here's wealth. Um, there it is going up and down. Um, we got e, this guy's one right here. Uh, and uh, the expenses that they did per day was down here. Um, not bad. They spent a dollar a day most days. In the very beginning, they didn't spend so much. The problem is, is, is look at, watch this. Wealth per day. You think, okay. Watch what happens though, it's so random, it's, it, it's gotta drive this poor person nuts. Look at this. That's very different. That's a very different life, right? They're doing good in the beginning, in the middle they have a hard time, in their middle years, and in the end of their life they're doing good again. But you say, well that's not so bad. Run it again. Good or bad. 
Hard to say. Tough end of life. Okay, and then you can look at the expenses like this. Eh. And of course, if we go up here to this number right here and make this um, 0 0.95 like we just did in the plot um, before, takes right off. Makes lots of money because I'm saving on average a nickel a day. If I come back here to this number and I make him uh, 1.05, we had made it. I'll say, okay, and we run this guy. Now we're in a real mess because I'm always blowing my money, okay, just like the plot. But you got to understand, every one of these plots, you know, is different, okay, because the income sequence is different. All right, you got to think of it in a, in a sort of a broad, <coughs> excuse me, in a broad sense in terms of what's happening. But you, I, I want to try to emphasize, you know, in a certain sense, I don't like um, all of this stuff. Like, like all of it's like, what is all this? You know, all of that. It's just a huge distraction. You know, this is a distraction. This is a distraction. It's all the same, right? All that stuff that I just cut out is all just monitoring stuff. Like this is just monitoring. This is just monitoring. This is just a scope of the, the income per day. Well, that's real. You know, insightful, it's a number between zero and two. Big deal. You don't really need to ever look at that. You know what it is. So why have it there? Just a distraction. This is a distraction. This is a distraction. This is a distraction. Just take and connect that to that. What's this? Random number block. Minimum value zero, maximum value two. So that, that guy there, this is, just, this is just for data saving right there now you're starting to see what the core of the idea is just by looking at this loop and and you can see um more easily um what's happening just by studying this by itself and this is tricky enough as itself by itself i, I think what you have to understand is so i showed you all the tutorial with simulink so you look at all these different blocks and they all seem easy. The problem is, is that when you start interconnecting them, all kinds of crazy things can happen. Dynamics start happening. Feedback starts happening. Nonlinearities have an effect, okay? Stochastic variables have an effect. So it becomes really tricky. Um, but you can get at the core with it with Simulink. You can get at, get at the real problems this way. Okay. Um, anyway, that, that we're going to... Um, Go back to, um, where am I, right here? We're going to pick up right here next time. And what we're going to do is I want you to keep in mind the objective. The objective is to get rid of all this randomness in a lot of ways and make things easier on this person. That's going to be our objective. All right, we'll see you on uh, Wednesday. <laughs>